it just sort of now I'll kick us off. I don't want it to start in mid sentence. Um, I will kick us off. Welcome everyone. Although uh, I agree with Mary Elizabeth, we are all tree people at heart. This is the air monitoring subcommittee meeting. Um, I, the trees subcommittee meeting is in a few weeks. Um, we're very, very excited for that. And to partner um, with Little Manila actually on, on getting that one set up and going. Uh, so as you will recall, I'm just gonna sort of give a brief oral history of, of uh, where we're at with air monitoring in um, the Stockton area. Um, and, and Chai will go over this in detail in the presentation, but high level, we've all worked together really hard to identify sort of where we wanted certain types of monitoring done um, within the community. Uh, we, we highlighted kind of the zones that we wanted air monitoring and the types done and sort of the reasons why. So um, just as an example, we had this fully loaded air monitoring trailer and we placed it just downwind of the port um, near an elementary school. Um, and, and really that's the, I would say the process we went through for every single one of the, the uh, monitors that you all sort of identified a location for. And it was where, you know, what's upwind of that region? How are we protecting the sensitive populations? How are we monitoring the most vulnerable? And through that, we ended up just collectively deciding, and we thought it would be sort of a one fell swoop situation that schools kind of made the most sense. It was the publicly accessible areas that we needed in order to maintain the equipment. It was the, um, the location, right? We know exactly those are the sensitive populations. So we would in essence be monitoring the air that the most sensitive of us would be breathing. Um, and the schools happen to be kind of in areas that we felt like we had sort of identified what the sources of concern were, what the emissions or pollutants of concern were. Um, so, and, and again, a lot of the details of the exact process are in, in Chai's presentation, but just to bring us up to speed to date, um, we've tried a couple of different times, actually really three different times um, to come to an agreement with Stockton Unified School District and provided, you know, any technical information we needed. I know a lot of you provided support from the community perspective on getting uh, monitors deployed at the schools. Uh, but really at this point, it's become clear through sort of direct and indirect messaging from the school district that I, I think at this time, it just, it maybe it's a capacity issue. Obviously there's so much happening, right? With COVID and capacity at schools for a lot of other things. And so at this point, we all kind of collectively agreed at our last monitoring uh, meeting to pursue plan A as best we could, which was to reach out to the school districts, but also start to come up with a plan B because we need to start monitoring now, right? We have the equipment, we're ready to go. Um, so we got a lot of great feedback from you today. Chai is going to go over a little bit of the, you know, how we pursued plan A, um, but really dive into the details on what plan B looks like. I think there's a little bit of feedback we'll need on, on a couple of plan Bs, and then some of them are seem really promising and like we could be ready to go pretty soon. So with that, I'm going to kick it over to Chai. Please stop at any time to ask questions. This is really an interactive, you know, the slides are really just going to be for the discussion points, um, but especially as he goes sort of site by site. Um, uh, feedback is, is super, I mean, that's why we have this meeting, right? So definitely let us know. And with that, I'll pass it to Chai. All right, thanks, Jess. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through um, a little bit of a history again, kind of just repeat a little bit here. Um, but before I really start all of this, I just wanted to give a, a lot of kudos to Matt Holmes, um, uh, all your work, putting uh, all the alternative sites and then sending it to us in a nice map has, uh, has really helped us out in this process. And, and you're just so accessible, you know, they call you and you're always eager to help. So that's really uh, helping us out a lot. So just wanted to express my appreciation for that, Matt. Hey, you're welcome, um, my pleasure. I was already um, looking at those places anyway, so I had to <laughs> uh, don't give me too much credit. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think another part that's really helpful is that you have a lot of connections at these sites and you're able to kind of navigate through some of those. And that's I think that's one of the most difficult things is just cold calling a, a location. It's very hard to, to get access to those. And, and with your connections, that, that's that's been uh, helpful. So could, is everybody seeing the, uh, the screen here, the presentation? Yes. All right, so back in January, 2020, as many of you recall, we started this process and uh, working with, with you all to 
uh, developed our, our community air, air uh, monitoring network. And we identified all the sources of concern. We got the recommendations from the CSC on these locations um, and we recommended the school sites. The CSC, the CSC recommended that throughout the entire boundary. We had several meetings um, to develop this plan and including all the air monitoring locations and the types of air monitoring equipment. And this was the final map that we found that we that we uh, got to. And these are all all schools uh, in, in these areas. And we had different zones uh, to kind of break this up to make sure that we had good coverage um, uh, in the uh, entire uh, community. And so these were the type of equipments, uh, like on the left here, what you see here is just a PM25 real time. And this one is what we call an air pointer and has multiple pollutants in there. It's our compact multi-pollutant. And typically we combine those two together in a trailer, trailer like this. Uh, and so we need, basically we'll just park this trailer there and that's where it's gonna get, um, and we'll, we'll do the monitoring. And then lastly here, we have the air monitoring trailer, which is, has a whole suite of uh, air monitoring equipment in there. And um, so we have one of these uh, for areas that we have you know, greater concern on where we really wanna understand exactly what type of things that we're seeing. So as mentioned before, you know, we, there was a lot of effort working with uh, Stockton Unified. Uh, we worked very closely with their staff um, to determine the possible locations and even to develop the, the license agreement. They worked very closely with us um, and we, we felt that well, they understood the board members so um, what information is needed and what type of terms that they would like. And so we worked with them on that and got the, that all set, set and ready. Um, and you know, we took it to the board and, in, in that, and again, in that license agreement, we outlined that we would cover all of the costs, um, including you know, the infrastructure, the maintenance, you know, electrical, that there would be no, that basically they would not need to provide any resources to us, we would cover everything. Only thing is that we ask is just access uh, to, um, uh, to continue maintenance on these, these equipment. And, and you know, despite all the efforts um, from what we've done and all the efforts that the CSC has um, put forth to, to get this pass, um, the Stockton Unified School Board, they voted to not approve this license uh, agreement to install these monitors at the proposed locations. And so that's where we have our plan A to continue pursuing that and plan B is to look at um, identify all alternative locations uh, for air monitoring. So in the next, these next slides here, I'm gonna go uh, location by location and identify and show some of the potential locations that we could monitor at. Um, many of them we have already contacted and started the process. Um, and so the first one is at Victory Elementary. As you can see here, the uh, small map is kind of in reference to, to the map that you saw earlier to give a context to which area that we're talking about. Um, so this one is in the northwest uh, corner. So here we originally uh, were, were proposing to do it at Victory Elementary. And so uh, we also found that Hagen Museum is fairly close by over here. And we had talked to them, uh, talked to the CEO and um, they seem um, it seems promising. They're going to talk internally to see um, what the possibility is on that. Um, there's also other sites here. I think um, the fire station and there's a, a furniture uh, location down here. There's sort of, but it's things that we look at is um, one if it's for the trailers, if we need to make sure that there's potential parking space where we can park it, and if it's not a trailer, if it's just a PM25 monitor. Ideally, that would, would go on a roof, and so we need to make sure that um, they have flat roofs that's accessible. Um, and then the next one is I, can I ask it? Can I ask a question that's maybe a, a just a leading question for people to think about, but maybe just a question for you? It doesn't have to go on a roof, though, right? Like if we look identify a location, okay. Yeah, that's correct. And ideally, it's just a um, safer place to put it, but it doesn't mm -hmm. have to. And that's that was. Uh, just to go back a few steps, one of the concerns from Stockton Unified, and they said, well, you know, some of the roofs are very old. They had concern that uh, for us to, to put equipment up there. And we did tell them that, you know, it does not have to go on the roof. And we actually have alternative locations that are on the ground 
at the ground level too. And uh, but anyways, even after all of that, um, they voted uh, to not allow us to do that. So. So the next one is Washington Elementary, um, as you see here. Um, and so the, as far as the stars, the red star is the uh, proposed location that we originally had. These yellow stars are the uh, potential alternative sites. Um, so here we have Boggs Track Community Center and the, and the Port of Stockton. And, um, and just a side note on Boggs Track Community Center, really wanted to uh, thank uh, Maria Mendez on this too. Um, I think she, uh, help push this through and um, we got uh, multiple contacts, multiple layers that's just going through and, and helping us uh, push this up the ladder on, onto it. And so just today, actually, I got a call from the San Joaquin County property manager, uh, you know, working with him to provide the necessary information so that he could take it up the ladder and, and get all the necessary approvals ultimately to the board for approval for that. So we're working through that right now. Um, the other potential site is Port of Stockton, and, and they've been very uh, receptive on this. Basically, they're just um, to a point where they just say, hey, you know, come by, see where you want it to be, and then we can just move forward from there. So they're ready to, pretty much ready to go. Uh, considering that it is a trailer on this one, we will need more power. And so we will need to most likely uh, have an electrician to build the necessary uh, electrical infrastructure there to provide the necessary power. Um, so one thing that Matt and I actually talked about uh, in this particular case, I know the CSC uh, has expressed uh, interest in, in Boggs Track Community Center as that's where we really want to go. Um, but um, I think so far what we're experiencing now is although we're getting really positive response from Boggs Track, um, I think it's it may take a little bit longer. Um, so one, one alternative that the uh, CSC can um, maybe uh, consider is if we want to go ahead, if Port of Stockton is uh, willing to get this started now, if we start monitoring there and we can see where Box Track Community Center, where that goes. I mean, we could go for a year or so at Port of Stockton and depending on the results, if we wanna move, and there's always flexibility to move later on. Um, and again, this is just to avoid, you know, just that long process of trying to get approval. And before we know it, you know, months down the road, maybe even a year, and we haven't gone anywhere, haven't gotten any um, monitor information. So that's something that I think um, would be a, a good discussion point. But I see uh, Douglas, you yeah. have your hands up. Oh, good catch. I, I can rarely see hands raised yeah. when I'm presenting. Good job, Chai. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have a question. Why, okay, I see this, the, the presentation where they have the red star and the two yellow star. The, the blood track community standard is that working with San Joaquin County uh, property manager to obtain permission. Are we going to be paying them to install that, that equipment into their area? They are. So for all of these, uh, but is there some place that what you, you do for uh, without paying, or you have to pay somewhere in different area like the Port of Stockton? It doesn't stay uh, working with to the point of identify exact location to fit the trailer electrical upgrades. So is it also be part of the the same another location as well in a similar site as well? That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. Um, just. So for example, like all of the other sites that we have in the other communities, um, and they're all a little bit different depending on the site, you know, like for example, like some of the school sites, they, and depending on the, our, the equipment that we're gonna put there, if it's a small piece of equipment, um, um, some of them they'll say, you know, well, even electrical, if it's just a small amount, uh, they won't charge us on that and they'll just give it to us for free. Um, other sites, um, especially if, if it's, it's not a, um, Nonprofit site or governmental site, uh, we may they may request a, um, a like a rental fee, and, and we pay for that. Um, and then of course some sites we can just pay one flat fee that covers both the electrical and the and the leasing of it. But at all of the sites, anytime that there needs to be any type of work that's done, uh, we're the ones uh, that um, that pay for that, and and we have the funding and and it's really intended to to pay for these. So. And these sites, box track community, we will pay for pretty much everything. And, and if they need to um, 
if they, they need a rent uh, for us to pay rent, uh, we will pay that as well. Uh, of course, we'll, we'll talk and negotiate and make sure that that's a reasonable rate. Um, but yes, we will pay and, and cover all of that. And that includes Port of Stockton as well. But just, just so, so, so I'm sorry. Uh, one more question. So the reasonable rate. What? How? How you? How you? How do you take the 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 value of the of the a reasonable rate between each site that they may? I know you got the funding for the state, but at the county when they receive money from the state, the 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 the, the it go, is there a fluctuate in different sites? That's a, that's my last question. Thank you. Yeah, I don't just may have more to add on to this, but uh, so you're asking like as far as the, do we have the fund? How do we, is it established per site or is it overall? Yeah, I think he was just asking how we go about determining if it's a reasonable rate for, for charge, you know, if someone charged us rent. Yeah, and well, for that, it's because we, we do have experience um, with all of these other sites that we already have in Fresno and in Shafter. Uh, we have a very similar layout here of sites that uses a big trailer, sites that just use a small, um, equipment. Um, so we do have those as references. And so that helps determine if it's reasonable or not. So just to summarize, Chai, electrical upgrades, electrical utilities costs, and potentially rent are all op options for us to, to, to work with the, um, whether it's a land management agency or the, or the property owner, whomever. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yep. All right, I think Mary Elizabeth and then Matt. Hi, so I I had, uh, I thought it was a good idea if the Port of Stockton is uh, ready to go and, you know, we could get something in conceivably in six weeks, that would be, you know, great. Um, uh, for a year, I, I think, you know, that we should keep going with the box track and uh, commit to at least six months at the port. That, and then uh, just for the record, uh, the Stockton Unified School District trustees uh, recently uh, did uh, a motions regarding upgrading of deficient facilities. And none of those upgrades uh, related to roofs. And uh, thank you very much, Maria. I am very grateful for your efforts and I hope that we can make a uh, box track the home of this monitoring device. And then one other question is, you know, like we have all of this equipment here that was purchased for the Stockton uh, camp program. Uh, and I'm wondering, is there any of that equipment that will be staying in our community? Yeah, so yeah. the equipment is, is, is for the community. And I think as far as how long that it stays there, um, at each, you know, even at each location, how long it stays at each location, that's gonna be something that we'll be uh, discussing with the, with the steering committee. And you guys will help determine on, on how that's gonna work out. All right, Matt. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to talk about Mary Elizabeth was bringing up the duration of monitoring. And I, I just, having been through one of these before, I know it's really important to capture seasons. Uh, with that, there's a lot of fluctuation in wind and there's also fluctuations in commerce patterns at the port. So um, I think uh, I would just advocate for being flexible and to move more centrally to Boggs Track. But I think we do need a year in one place. And if the port's ready to gather it, I think it's still really close. Um, and I think, you know, this is, this is a robust installation. And, you know, we're, we're used to regulators getting away with sort of 50 kilometer characterizations. So being over the rail truss isn't, isn't really a great distance from Boggs track. That's my two cents. And I just wanted to let folks know that are really, um, that I fully agree with you. Like I wanted this right next to the kids, right? At Washington and in Boggs track. And I think that's an important principle. Uh, but there are also going to be uh, other monitoring efforts that will help us characterize how air is dispersed around the port and in through Boggs Tract in the community there. So it's really important that we get this 
uh, this really reference grade data that only the Air District can collect rolling as soon as possible. And I'll just say, I, I you know, uh, you guys sat through our conversations with the port for the last year. I've been pleasantly surprised at their, um, the, at staff's earnestness in getting us out there to monitor as well. So I, I really do think they'll move quickly on this. And I think we need to move quickly. I think we were actually supposed to have monitoring up back in January. Um, so um, uh, I, I think we can serve the needs of getting it into the community, but I think if it's placed right, placed right over the bridge in the port uh, footprint, we're not losing that much as far as informing the community. And reference grade data, Taylor, is um, like super badass science that's true and people can't really argue with as opposed to, uh, you know, hokey community stuff that I'll be doing. Well, your stuff was no, not hokey, but certainly def definitely, I think what, what Matt's saying, because I definitely don't want to disparage that like, the community grade stuff has a lot of benefits that I know Matt has expressed before about more like trends analysis, spatial determinants of, of air pollution, but reference is actually, that term is actually cited in the, um, the CFR, so the, the Clean Air Act sort of implementation language um, on a federal level. And basically the monitors that we're using could, you know, they're the types of monitors that we use to reference or, or compare to national ambient air quality standards. So, um, you know, they're, they're much, much more expensive than, you know, a community grade monitor, but that's because to, to Matt's point, they're bad, badass science. I, I love that. But it's just the, the type of technology that's used um, and, and the way that they're calibrated mean, means that you're getting down to a, a really significant um, like within you know small amount of air level of what the actual air quality is. Yeah, and a lot of maintenance too. So. <laughs> a lot of maintenance, yes. Yeah. So that's but uh, yeah, you bring some really good Congrats. points here, uh, Matt. Uh, I, I mean, really, the one year is kind of like a minimum to capture the annual trend, and then, and who knows how long it'll take us to get to box track too. So they'll buy us some time onto that, and and that can always be the next destination point after the one year. That would be good to have and. It's really hard to get any site, uh, honestly, to, to get a mantra at any site. And once we get there, it's nice to kind of make sure that we make full use of it. So, so that's a, Can I a, ask a, a follow up. Um, sure. will, the, will, will there be um, weather in this packet here? We'll, we'll have wind direction. Yes, all of these will have, yeah, we'll have the meteorology in there. I think for my community partners, one of the reasons I'm really keen to get this out there as quickly as possible is I actually think the wind rose is kind of clumsy in this area and it assumes sort of a, a west to east routine blowing from the port. And I live right north of the port. And so I, I experience it all the time. Um, and I think uh, we all really want to capture this fall, this winter's uh, weather pattern as soon as possible. Um, I think, I think it's blowing north too, right? I mean, a wind rose is sort of a, a characterization. It's not yeah. definite. And, and weather's funny these days. Yeah, sounds good. So um, if everyone's in agreement to that, we're, I mean, they're saying they're ready for us to go and take a look at it and finalize it. So uh, if everyone's good with that, we can, we can start with that process and, and see how fast we can get this up. Well, One thing I'll just say just before we go through all of these. So what we'll do is we're going to write down all of the committee recommendations because this is a subcommittee and we want to be equitable, right, to all the folks that couldn't make this. So we'll have our standing update at the Stockton meeting on Wednesday um, and just sort of work with our, our facilitator to just kind of get consensus on the, the subcommittee's recommendations. So I just wanted everyone. Oh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, I wanted everyone to know that this is it doesn't just live in this little silo. Yeah, that's great. All right, next, Hazleton Elementary. And this is, uh, I think out of all the sites, this is the most challenging one uh, to find the alternative sites, um, um, even despite all of the uh, locations um, that Matt had provided. Um, so these are some of the places, um, like Santa Fe, ideally Santa Fe townhomes, it's right there, but this is the one where we're gonna need a trailer, uh, a parking area for the trailer. And so um, this is still definitely a work in progress and and we're very fortunate we got Matt to kind of have some of the contacts in here to, to look at a little bit further into this, see if we can um, get a Santa Fe Homes or San Joaquin Street Station um, and uh, or the UPS authorized shipping provider. And one, one thing about the UPS portion is that 
it is in the next, if we were to follow the grids that we have placed, it falls into the next grid, but it is closer to that. So it's something for, for the CSC to consider that. This area here, if you, if you look on the, the main map, which is that small one over here, that the, the school itself is already at the southern tip. And so it actually covers this entire larger area up, up all the way up north here. So um, if we if if we just want to focus right around the school here because we're we're concerned with this area, or is there any other location farther up that the CSC is uh, thinks that there's you know other potential sites that we could we could place this trailer at? Um, I think that that would be some really good feedback that we could get on. Uh, but currently, right now, all of these are still somewhat up at the up in the area um, as far as um, getting any uh, good leads on. So Roosevelt Elementary uh, on this one, uh, post office, we've reached out to them and no response, but fortunately we got Matt and Matt got some response. So well, yeah, I talked to him today uh, and it was, they had no idea what to do with my request. But so I went to the Congressman, he went to the local directorate in Sacramento and they escalated to DC about two weeks ago. And they said, I hope you hear something and I, she, I don't know what she said. There was, there might've been like a note of, I wouldn't hold my breath, um, but I'm going to, I, I ran into the Congressman again on Sunday at Earth Day. Uh, so I'm going to say, hey, make the federal government work for us here in this area. Uh, so hopefully we can, get, it's really an ideal location, um, uh, but I also just, I also just um, made a new relationship with Caltrans District 10 headquarters which isn't far from here and it's and they would be amenable to hosting so i think we do have a couple of solutions in this area um, for roosevelt elementary douglas you have some questions i i you know what i i i i, 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 I have a friend i used to work at the post office and normally when they get approved by something outside the that realm they use a postmaster that i uh, charge the whole week and so I think it's better luck instead of going to Congress. I believe a post office, a postmaster normally is the one that approve whatever that within the his jurisdiction. So I definitely think we should definitely talk to the at the master. I know there is one right behind um, uh, the main office is on um, West West Westlink, somewhere around that area. So. And then there's another one, both matters that go back go to the quail lake as well. So those two, those things those, that Mike might get some answer. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, and it sounds, it sounds like I think that's maybe the, the thread that Matt pulled on to get to yeah. whom he did. Um, but I think that's a great idea, Douglas. We'll definitely, I just like all of these, we'll, we'll keep on keeping on, like with, you know, the ones we haven't gotten responses on, but we'll definitely keep working or you know work with you all i don't want to say keep like I, we don't want this to be an ongoing project we want this as soon as possible but asap will find alternatives um if it seems obvious that um we're kind of hitting a dead end with a couple of places yeah so taft uh, elementary alternative um so for this one i mean ideally the taft community center is just right by where the taft elementary is and again i, I I give this back to Matt because Matt's the one who has all the connections on this and has been really helping us out on this. So ideally, if we could get Taft community, we would go there. Um, if not, we have Little Manila Center, which uh, we have good connections with. Um, and then uh, from there on, uh, there's the All Saints Academy. And I believe this is the St. George, also known, well, previously known as St. George. Uh, so we have indicated, uh, talked to the school that they have indicated interest on that. But it is a little bit farther up from where we originally had intended. Um, and so I think on this one, if we can get Taft Community Center, we'll go there. If not, then maybe we'll have to jump up to Little Manila and move on up after that. I yeah, see. I was just going to say, I think it's important to be as southerly as possible. Um, and Little Manila would be a, a, a fallback. And then, you know, everybody that's been involved with this knows St. George showed up to this process for a year. Um, and is you know a center for that community, 
Um, so, you know, worst case scenario, we bump up north to St. George. Uh, these are still these are still hyper local monitoring strategies, even you know, even mm -hmm. if they are 20 blocks to the north. So I think it's it's a fair trade off for time um, and get and yeah. speedy deployment. Chai, I see that Regina and Jonathan both have contacts um, at Taft. Would you both mind either sending them or helping us introduce? Awesome. Thank you, Regina. I see nods. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I think that would be a good, um, yeah, good way to, to move yeah, forward right. on that. And I think, Matt, you also have some contacts over there too, right? Based on this discussion. Yeah, I've been buzzing. I thought it was Don Aguilar down there, um, Jonathan. No? Okay. I, I heard he was down there for a couple of years. Regina, are you shaking your head too? Okay. And now uh, it's a gentleman who was running for uh, Miguel Villapudas, uh okay. as a, I forgot his name. He's a, I have his number. Let me look it up. Well, I mean, isn't it a county facility? Like, like the- Yes, Boston it's county. Center? I mean, I think that's maybe it is, and, and it's part of uh, Miguel Villapudoas too. So if you guys will be talking with them soon, try oh, regarding okay, so box we'll... trucks, then you you guys can connect with him regarding this other center too. Okay, all right, thanks, Maria. So yeah, You're we're welcome. already working with him. I can um, uh, well, yeah, we'll make it just one effort to try to get Taft Community Center it's the same with with the box track together because I know there's a few individuals that we had to kind of pull through and finally reaching to their um, property manager. Um, so I'll just talk to the property manager on, onto this one too then. Yeah, that sounds great. And it sounds like Regina and Jonathan are both mentioning Terrence West um, is their direct contact. So I think the county and the direct contact would be, you know, as many people as possible are always, yeah, yeah. always good. Definitely. Okay, so we'll contact that. So you guys have the phone number? Is that, um, is that something that you can email me or, or post it in here and I can just I could follow up with them too. I'll ask him if he still works there. Okay. Yeah, why don't we do that? And then Chai, I, I like the idea of using our, our current contact and maybe we can just yeah. even like name drop Terrence if, if he does still work there. Yeah, um, that sounds good. Great. Looks like Douglas, you have your hands up? Oh, you're still on mute. Oops, you're still muted. Maybe you meant Douglas. I'm, I think I'm that might have been an hand. old hand. I think that might have been an old hand. Oh, I said I was saying that no, I was I, was, I had my hand. I just kind of moved my hand up, kind of scratch it. That's all. Got it. Okay. No, thanks, thanks, Doug. All right. So uh, the next one here is the Merlot Institute of Environmental Technology, and this one is is going to be another uh, trailer where we're going to need to have parking space, um, and so. On this particular one, we have talked to uh, Stockton Fairgrounds, and they seem um, seems like they're interested in, in it. Uh, wanted to see what a sample agreement would be, would look like, so we sent that off to them, and so they're they're still looking over that and reviewing that, and I hope we can get some more feedback from them on that. And then the other one, if we can't get that one, uh, there is Sierra Vista Housing Authority uh, that uh, uh, Matt has suggested also. Um, and now, did you say you had some contacts with, with this? As yeah, well? I've, I've spoke to the director and the facilities director, and they said they would be happy to. They just didn't want to be the only people hosting sensors. Uh, they wanted to make sure that, you know, they, I think they were just being sensitive to not, um, I don't know, monopolize the relationship yeah, with the air right. district. And I said, that's not a, that's not a problem. <laughs> um, just give us somewhere. Um, to yeah, yeah. So they're, they're totally ready. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, Sierra Vista is also, you know, super important location for the population mm -hmm. and, and the... Well, you know, and I mean, I... yeah, that's a really good point. And, and we're back to like when, with the box track and Stockton Port discussion where whoever is willing to, to really get moving on this, then we, we start it there. And, and we, we can always look for alternative locations after, after we actually get this monitor up and running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, I also just just 
highlighting, always trying to bring it back to all of the work that we all did together. I think a lot of the early, early, early work in Stockton to expand the boundary to include Sierra Vista housing, I think that would just be a really important sort of, if if that is, you know, it seems to be an easy, easy fit. I think it fits the, the narrative that all of you kind of who have been here from the very beginning kind of felt like the need for Sierra Vista to be represented. And I think having a monitor there might be might be a good way to do that. Maria. Yeah. Yes, uh, well, Merlot Gym is actually run um, by, is part of the city of Stockton, Parks and Recs, and I'm actually one of the commissioners. I can actually be able to get you guys contact as Merlot Gym does not belong to Stockton Unified School District at all, the gym. Oh, so, you, hey, uh, Maria, are you saying the Merlot Institute or Merlot Gym? Is that a different thing? The Merlot Gym does not belong to Stockton Unified School District. They, uh, the city let us borrow the gym for the, our students, but it's oh, actually run. Okay. Yes, but it's overseen um, through the recreational parks and recs of the city of Stockton. Is that just south of this red star here? Is yeah, it's just right there. Correct, right, right okay. next to the park. Correct. That's really good to know too. Yeah. So how would we we go about that? Um, I can contact um, uh, Nelson Cortez, and I can uh, give them your contact information. Then okay. so they can, because uh, I think there's about three different uh, city staff that they go. Or they actually monitor three different departments so regarding the parks, uh, the parks, the recreational part, the other events. So then they can actually communicate and they, you guys can go from there. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. And that's it. I, did we skip one? Can you go back like two slides? I feel. Ben Busker. Marshall. Yeah, that yeah. Man, Marshall. Man Hazleton? Yeah, we didn't talk. One more forward. There you go. There we are. Oh, oh, this, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah yep. we did. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so, okay, here's, here's, so this is the last location. Um, on this one, so there were, there's Conway Homes. Well, we have this Marshall Elementary up here. Uh, Conway Homes and Van Buskirk. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so we have contact Van Buskirk. They seem, uh, to be interested in it, so have asked for a sample contract. We sent that to them to review, uh, and then uh, so we haven't reached out to Conway Homes yet on that. But um, we'll see where that goes with Van Buskirk. Um, is there any any thoughts on any other potential locations or concerns with with Van Buskirk Community Center? I guess I'm just, maybe I'm curious to see the subcommittees prefer. I think we have, and maybe it's just, you know, we had, there was a lot to reach out for lots of folks and, oh, thanks Regina. Yes, I, I, I think we do have folks at Conway Homes we can reach out, you know, we've been working out throughout this process. So I guess I'm just curious um, if all else was equal in terms of availability and interest, is there a preference for Conway over Van Buskirk or sort of that um, you know, from this group, or are there any thoughts one way or another? Conway. I, I heard Conway from oh, Mary. Conway. Go ahead, Doug. I'm, I'm kind of missing a lot of something. I thought they, what happened to Victory Elementary, Victory Elementary oh. School is not even on the, on the presentation. What happened? That was the very first one we went over, the one that's just north of the port. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that was the very first one we went over. And all of the elementary schools were finding alternative sites too. Um, so the very first one that we, in, in the presentation, we talked about was the Victory Elementary. And, okay, so and I think it was, it, it was a park, um, Victory Park was an also option or that the museum that was one of the options. <laughs> But also there was another because I live right next to uh, in Fremont. I know I know it, it, in Fremont there is a, a bunch of warehouses and it's empty as well. But it, it needs, it's been rented. It's been leaking different um, warehouses uh, uh, right by across the way all the way. You can put on top of the roof or whatever. But there's vacant property right there right around Fremont Street. 
right on. So, um, and that's close to the Victory Park anyway. I mean, Victory School as well as a bit closer to the Persian, uh, drive right, right off the freeway. I do so, think, I think, the, I think that area, correct me if I'm wrong, Shai, but the museum up in Victory Park seems like it's pretty promising. So I oh, think that if yeah. you find that it's not promising, maybe what you're referencing, Doug, is maybe a bit. So, so are they always got accepted to have it somewhere the, this year or next year to set up the monitor as well? Ho hopefully, no. hopefully very, very soon. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm saying just, I just want to kind of ref uh, summarize a little bit. I asked kind of about Conway. I think it sounds like a lot of people, if I was to summarize this, the subcommittee, um, preference, you know, Conway, looking into Conway. I agree with Matt. That was my thought too, Matt, is I think a lot of the housing authority types work that we're doing uh, pertaining to Conway, Boggs, Tract, Taft, I think all of that is, or, you know, all the housing authority slash county work would be really all kind of one fell swoop, hopefully. Um, Margot. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. I just wanted to ask um, when we're talking about Conway Homes versus uh, Van Busker Community Center, what, what is it in Conway Homes? Does the Housing Authority actually have a secure building that we would use? Is that what it is? What do they have there or right. is it homes? That's a good, that's a great question. Maybe someone familiar, I did see, maybe Matt can help you. Yeah, I, so when I talked to the Housing Authority, they, they actually have a building right now that they're demolishing, but they have other, uh, it's like a corporation yard building that they would be able to put this on. But they're actually going to be building um, a lot of new facilities there in partnership with Kip Academy. So this could be. I, I think they I think they have a place that could handle our monitor right away, um, but it could also be um, a better long term installation in a year if we wanted to get it up on the roof of something. Uh, but I I don't I don't that's all speculative. I did want to ask uh, Regina to say more about her park though. I agree. Thanks, Matt. And I'll go to, if if I may, Taylor, can I go to Regina quickly? Because she did put it in the chat. Then I'll go to Taylor. Okay. Um, yes, I Perry Park is west of the school, the Red Star, and right in front of the levee by the river that runs there. And it is a vacant lot, basically. There's no trees or anything. Uh, except for near the water there. Uh, and I, I adopted Perry Park uh, about a year ago. And so, you know, I, I, I do have a relationship with Sue at the city of Stockton and, and uh, I, I'm not certain, you know, um, if that would be a, a good spot, but maybe one someone could come out and, and you know, take a look. And I could, I could cer I'm certainly willing to talk to Sue at, at, the, at the city of Stockton about that site. And that's it. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's always good to get all of these options because as promising as some sites may be, we'll go through and we, that might not work out. So we would prefer to just kind of hit all of them as much as we can. Now, do you know, is there any electrical um, at that park? So if it's just open area, then we would probably have to put a fence around it. And then uh, the biggest thing is going to be, is there a nearby electrical that we can tap into? Uh, I could certainly check that out for you because I, I couldn't say for certain right now, but I, I could I could go over and take a look and see if that's possible. I know it's right next to uh, Van Buskirk, and um, I know they have uh, some uh, like a like a water house or something there, right right on the edge there of that park. I don't, I'm not certain if it's electricity there, but it might be like a light pole, a city, mm -hmm. uh, something from the city. But I'll I'll, I'll get back to you on it. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Regina. I think, uh, and, and also while I, <laughs> I have the floor, uh, I think Conway is, I mean, you know, Prairie Park is great, but I think Conway is great because it's, it's really uh, highly populated in that area, mm -hmm. densely mm -hmm. populated, and it's a lot of kids around there. There's a community center and all that. So I would, that would be my first choice, actually. I mean, you know, yeah, that's all I need to say. Thank Thanks, Regina. All right, Taylor, you're up. Uh, totally agree with Regina on the on the Conway piece too. Um, and Matt's right; the Kip Academy is moving in there. But I talked to some folks from the Jobs Plus program, which runs out of that building, and they sounded like they were not going to leave for like at least another like year. So I don't know like how quickly that project is underway. 
uh, yeah, and, and the bit about um, uh, like density of residents, I think is like really important here for the same reason I think in Sierra Vista. Um, I actually did like a, a lot of research in this like census tracts about like like make up the demographics and it is like definitely also like very young and a very old population on either end who are certainly sensitive groups. Um, so that definitely, that'd be my vote. That sounds good. I mean, if there's, hey, Matt, do you have the contact that we can reach out to? If, yeah, if for sure. It'll available. be the same one for Sierra Vista. Yeah. Um, but I'll just put on my little Manila hat. That this was the neighborhood that Dawn grew up in. And this was the neighborhood that she was um, polluted by the freeway and developed her asthma in. And it's also a neighborhood that has a, a really substantial Caltrans setback near it that will be a highly actionable vegetative barrier location. So this could be the kind of place that collects baseline data before we forest that corridor. Um, and uh, I see the speed up from Maria, so I'll stop. Taylor, did you have another thought or your, was your hand still up? Nope, my bad, I'm done. No, it's okay. Trying to give space, um, Matt, and, and then you raise your hand or is yours, okay. And uh, yeah, so that's that's all of the sites. Uh, again, I think it looks like almost all of these sites we have we have some promising locations. Again, the, the most uh, difficult one is going to be the uh, in this area here with the Hazelton Elementary. Um, so something to kind of think about if, if you guys have any other contacts or potential sites that we can um, look into, um, let me know and we can. Uh, see what we can do. I know Matt's already working on some of these other sites here, but um, in case if there's any other sites as well. So Chai, if you could quickly, I'm gonna sort of like have you, I'm gonna narrate a little summation, but I think visually it might work best if you go back to your first, the Victory Elementary. Yep. So I think here, um, no, you're okay, Maria. I think, although we can always use a little reminder to speed up. Sometimes we're all, <laughs> we, we like talking. Um, but Victory Elementary, I think, uh, un unless we hear otherwise, uh, I didn't hear any objections to the, I don't know if it's Hagen or Hagen uh, Museum or the Victory Park area. So that's something we'll keep pursuing and let you know otherwise. Um, the next slide, we it sounds like we got pretty good consensus that moving forward with the Port of Stockton, I'm, I'm hearing and I'm seeing nodding from Mary Elizabeth as well, that about like if at least a year seasonality wise, but still of course, highly pursuing um the the community center for you know knowing it might take a little bit more time but for you know moving it after word but understanding that sooner is better for a lot of this information especially kind of the location and and it's really our our biggest most capable air monitoring that we're deploying here um so that's kind of the recommendation from there sorry next slide this was the tough one that we all maybe will keep kind of digging in and we'll definitely update you if we hear back um, from any one of these that has, you know, a, a better indication of, of process that we can move forward with. But right now, this is probably our biggest sticking point as Chai just summarized. Well, while we're on that one, go back to that mm -hmm. one. Where is the DMV um, in relation to this map? Do you all know? I'm blanking. Isn't it right there by the red? Um, Sorry. It's, it's across from the police station, uh, west a little bit. It's right here, right? Talk to DMV. There it is. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great question, and th thanks, Try. So definitely, I mean, DMV. There are lots of opportunities for us to keep reaching out to folks, and this will definitely be a place that will as a group, um, you know, if we hear anything before next Wednesday, we'll update everyone at the meeting, but certainly, um, you know, keep pushing forward on. Next slide. Um, here, we had a lot of uh, work that's still ongoing. Definitely thanks to Matt for, for running it up the, the, one of the tallest political polls all the way up to Congress members, but um, certainly re using the post office as an example um, of a place we could um, work with, but, um, you know, working, to look at any other opportunities and finding folks and a great idea from Doug. It sounds like it's the same concept that Matt was running with, but we'll kind of try all avenues and, and see where we get here. 
they do work for us. It's so true. We're, we're the top of the poll. That's a good point. Um, Marshall Elementary, um, the alternative here, uh, we just mentioned, it sounded like um, we do have maybe a couple of options outside what's listed here, but Conway Homes was the highest priority with the population density, maybe looking at the community center using the same contact there. Um, so we'll definitely let the committee know that the Conway Homes was the highest sort of next uh, best thing to Marshall Elementary. Uh, Taft, there was a lot of uh, discussion about really looking at the community center, although of course Little Manila and All Saints both have CSC members that are very um, appreciative of and, and very active, um, but uh, there was an indication that the Taft Community Center A is very, very close to the elementary school and B is south as possible. It would be, I think, our, most, our southernmost air monitoring station and could be really useful. So we'll keep pursuing that um, as sort of our number one choice. Go ahead. Um, and Merlot, we're going to work with, and we really appreciate that, Maria, um, looking into the gym that is essentially adjacent, it sounds like, to the school, um, because it's more of like a city-owned or operated piece of land, although Sierra Vista um, is, is a really highly impacted, highly populated uh, target area, so maybe pursuing both of those at the same time so we can get somewhere fast, um, and then maybe coming back to this committee for final recommendations. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So we will, um, I can, we'll have a little nice quick little summary of that. We'll post it um, on our, on our website. Actually, Chai, if you could, it's not complete, but we have broke, if you haven't noticed already, um, Chai, can you go to our, um, our stuff in site just to show folks that we did start separating things out into subcommittees. Um, and what I was going to say is that we will post the notes from this committee um, on that site. Um, but thank you, Margo. I was actually just going to say if someone wants to do um, just even a higher level version of that summary um, to the uh, to the CSC during that standing update, I certainly welcome any volunteers. Um, and again, you can go off of the summary that we'll, we'll type in post or, or your own notes. Um, you can certainly correct the record. Um, so yes, if you go to other meetings, Chai, they are now, and this will get more robust as we have subcommittees that, and, and we have time, but we wanted to do it as quickly as possible in response to some requests um, a couple weeks ago. So you can go here and directly just go to the camp subcommittee. We actually need to update that trees one. I can't quite see because my screen is very small, but the trees one, the next meeting is actually 1019. So that would be an update there. But if you click on camp and view meetings, it's just the air monitoring subcommittee meetings. Um, you see the note of the presentation from today. You will also see the video recording, the chat, as well as the notes. So I just kind of wanted to point you to that. Um, to uh, Jonathan's question, we do take attendance and we will post it with the notes. Um, it is always, it just, we take attendance automatically because we record it. So it's automatically recorded, which is great. Are there any volunteers to do a summary of today during the, during the meeting next Wednesday? Yep, next Wednesday, I am signing. Was that a clap, Regina, or a volunteer? I feel like that you're volunteering. Yes. Yes. Yay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Regina. I really appreciate it. We'll get those notes, but then definitely connect with us um, ahead of time uh, if you want to just kind of run things down. But I'll, we'll just kick it to you when the time comes, and we appreciate it. Sorry, Douglas, you also unmuted. I would just say uh, we're going to have the regular meeting on the first uh, next week, Wednesday, the third committee. We'll, get, we'll have all the information from the subcommittee report. Uh, we're going to be voting on the guidance. I know Mary and I've also um, um, Matthew, with, you know, brought that up to, to have that look, you know, having the, uh, the monitor put it on on a student part by the end of the year. Is that what I that, so so I think that'd be great. Huh? Yeah, all of the timing we talked about is ASAP, hopefully by the end of the all of these things of course as we've already seen through this process are right. on process. Some of them is literally we might have to like more concrete pull a trailer right now. But I think 
point, I don't I don't know that we're at the subsidizing stage. I think at this point, we're taking the subsidizing recommendation. Unless someone calls for it, of course, right? But we'll just, you know, have Regina provide the update and then look for consensus that people want to move forward with the subcommittee's recommendations on the summary that I just provided. Um, I don't think, too, at this point, it's, I think most of what we're doing is pursuing um, and focusing our pursuits on certain locations based on subcommittee recommendations. So if the, a decision point comes, we'll definitely make it more of a committee decision. But right now it's just focus on this and try this um, before this, I think it's just. Okay. Okay. I, Matt. I was just about to say, I'm doing the same and thanks Matt for, um, I was gonna say shameless, completely mm -hmm. perfect plug. Um, I was going to do the same. The statewide convening, please click on that link if you would like to participate. If you did on Monday, um, it's it's a, a new round of, of information, um, I think tonight. So I'm looking forward to it and we're participating as well. With that, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate uh, Regina for uh, volunteering and we'll send you some notes, Regina, and we'll connect with the rest of you soon, if not in two seconds. All right, thank you everyone for all your help and support. Bye. Thank you.